Today what we're going to do is I'm going to show you the basics of putting together um, a computer system, uh, a custom built computer system. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of what exact parts you're going to need to match up with what motherboards and um, what speed RAM or whatever. Uh, I just want to basically show you um, how to put one together. Uh, it's, it's fairly simple, um, but if you've never done it before, you know, it's good to watch somebody do it and, um, you know, get an idea of what to do and what not to do. So first what I do is, uh, you want to take the screws off the side panel. <clears throat> I'm going to lay it down like this. Remove. It's going to come with um, your screws and any other accessories. Let's put that aside. Usually it comes with like tie backs and stuff like that. This one comes with a power supply, which normally I wouldn't recommend. Um, I'd recommend spending a little extra on the power supply. not about to do in a box in right, right here but you know if you've never opened up a, a new motherboard this is the basics here it comes with your um, your IO panel it comes with your um, you know if if it's a new motherboard obviously it's going to be SATA enabled so it comes with your um, SATA cables Another thing is um, when you're when you are putting this in, installing this, you might want to put a wrist strap or something on, um, or be standing on a um, static mat, an anti-static mat. Um, usually, what I do, I mean, I've never had any of these components blow out on me due to um, static electricity. Um, I'll rest my hand on the the. the case itself, the metal, a metal pot on the case, that's ground enough so you know if you do, if you did uh, acquire any static charge in your body it's gonna you know let it let it go through the um, case itself so um, and not into the motherboard. So the first thing you're gonna want to do is set up the standoffs um, for the right for your type motherboard. Um, I have a micro ATX motherboard here so it's a little smaller than the standard ATX. Um, this case already has the standoffs um, installed, but they're set up for a regular ATX motherboard, uh, which is a little bigger. Um, all we're gonna have to do is take these two bottom standoffs and bring them up to these two top, um, the two holes ab above it. One thing that you want to make sure of, it's absolutely crucial, is you do not put the standoffs in the wrong spots because what can happen is it could short something out um, by hitting one of these pins back here that are poking out the back. So you definitely want to make sure you don't do that. Next thing you want to do is install the I.O. panel. Make sure you have it facing you know the right way goes like that. When the board goes in like that, uh, you can it will go in that way too. But you're not going to get the motherboard in there, so just make sure you have it facing the right way. Okay, now now that we have the case um, prepared to put the motherboard in, it's a lot easier, especially when you're working on a smaller. This case is, is a mid-sized case. It's fairly easy to uh, maneuver inside there. But uh, if you're working on a really tight um, in a really tight area, um, it's a lot easier just to place all your components on your uh, main board first, and then install the main board.
Now, <clears throat> to install the RAM, you want to have this on a flat surface because you don't want to be putting pressure on the board. Um, that's why it's good to do this when it's outside the, um, the case too because the standoffs only sit on certain points of the board so the board can still flex. Um, if you have this on a flat surface, um, I usually leave it right on the anti-static bag. Um, you'll have a lot more support when you go to push these in. But the way to do it is there's two clips on either side of these. You, you want to make sure they're out like that. The other thing that you want to make sure is the slot placement is in the right spot. If you flip it around like this, you're not going to get it in and you're going to break something. So just make sure that you, you match up that slot with the notch in the um, dim slot on the motherboard. Uh, you want to put one one side in first and then line up the other side and then you want to evenly press on both sides and you'll hear them click into place and just do that with both modules or hum, however many um, dims you have. Moving on to the CPU you'll see that there's a socket cover on here you want to leave that on until you're ready to install your CPU. Um, the pins underneath there, very sensitive. You don't want to touch them. You don't want anything falling on them. You don't want any dust getting in there. Um, that's what makes your connection from your CPU to your motherboard. This is your standard retail Intel heatsink. Um, it comes with thermal paste already applied. So you're going to want to leave the cover on until you're ready to install that. Um, these in, these heat sinks install pretty easily. Uh, it's a push based um, installation. You don't have to turn the screw the screws on here. Um, that's only to pop it off. Uh, so it's just you place it where the holes are on the motherboard. Four holes. To open this up, you want to push this lever down here, and you're going to pull it towards you, like that, and then it pops up like that. Now. This processor only goes in one way. Uh, let me see if I can show you this. If you look here, there's two notches at the very top, and there's also two notches on this chip here at the very top. You want to line those up and then just drop it in. You don't have to push it in, you just set it on top. This actually pushes it in when you put that plate back down. Now what you want to do is press this lever back down again. You're going to pull it out towards you and then push it under this little thing right here. But again, you want to have this on a flat surface when you do that. Now we're going to take our cover off um, the heat sink. Pull that out. And these pins line up with the motherboard holes around the CPU. One, two, three, four. What I usually do is I will put my hand behind it like this to support the motherboard, give the motherboard some support. Um, you're going to have to lift it off the table uh, either way um, because these poke through. 
then I line it up like that. You want to push evenly on both sides. You'll hear it click into place. Put your fingers behind there to give it support. You don't want to flex this motherboard. And you can see right there that the pins went through. Next what we're going to do is install the motherboard itself into the case. And place them on the standoffs that we have already set up. Next, we're going to install our hard drive. <coughs> You're going to want to make sure you have the connectors facing out towards the motherboard. Next, we're going to install the DVD ROM drive. Depending on where you want to place this, you're going to pop these off. Again, these usually come off. Um, you know, this setup is a little different. This pushes to the side and you pop these out like that. Um, a lot of them you have to push out from the inside because um, there's nothing to grip on out here, which is a nice feature on this. This just slides in through the front. Now what we're going to do is connect our components to the motherboard via SATA cables. These SATA cables have a little notch. If you've never put one of these in before, um, it only goes in one way if you have it flipped around the wrong way and you try to force it, it will definitely break. So you're going to want to make sure you know you pay close attention to the position of the um, SATA cable and connector. Now what I'm going to do next is connect the power cable to the motherboard and the two components that we have in here being the hard drive and the DVD ROM drive. One thing I want to mention is a lot of these power supplies um, they're universal for different types of motherboards, different setups so um, you know you might see um, some motherboards only use this many pins, uh, some require this many pins so it kind of clips in there so you can use that. This motherboard we're going to have to clip that in there because um, this is the kind of setup it uses. Now, another thing you're going to want to remember because your computer will not boot, if you have this other 4 pin connector, um, it's usually located somewhere near the uh, CPU. If you don't plug this in, usually what will happen is the computer will turn on, but it won't post. So you'll have all your fans spinning, all your lights, um, if you have lights on the case, uh, will come on, but you won't get any um, 
your motherboard won't post. So definitely want to make sure that's plugged in. Next, what we did is a little cable management. Um, make sure you have all your stuff plugged in. Um, once you do, any remaining cables, uh, just try to clump them together, tie them up. You want to keep the um, airflow really nice in these cases. Uh, you don't want to be restricting airflow. So um, I went ahead and did that already. I tied them up. There's not a whole lot of cables in here. Um, so it was pretty simple and basic. Next what we want to do is we want to connect the power switch and reset switch and all these other um, connectors for the pin headers on the motherboard. Um, some of the motherboards are going to have it written right on the motherboard itself uh, where these go. Uh, a lot of them don't. So you're going to have to uh, refer to your owner's manu manual for that. Okay, now that we have the connectors to the pin headers um, on the motherboard, um, what we're going to do is go over the whole system and make sure everything is in its place um, before we try and power it on. Um, I double checked the pin headers, they're all in the right order. Um, we have a plug securely plugged into the uh, our power plug securely plugged into the main board. Um, we have our four pin connector up here securely plugged in. Uh, we have our audio plugged in for the front um, audio and uh, mic microphone um, plugs. Uh, we have our USB for our front USBs plugged in. Uh, we have our fan plugged in for our CPU. Um, our, our rear exhaust fan is plugged in. Our SATA cables are plugged in to the motherboard. Our SATA um, power, power um, plugs are plugged into um, both the mother, I mean, both the uh, DVD ROM drive and hard drive, and I think that's about it. Um, now it's time to plug it in. Okay, next step would be to turn it on, and um, if everything goes correctly, um, the BIOS should beep, indicating that it's run a check on all the components and everything's working fine, and we should be able to boot into BIOS. There you go. Um, everything seems to be working okay. Uh, now all we have to do is install the operating system. If you have any questions or comments, post below and don't forget to subscribe.